Hi everyone, welcome. It is I, Thomas, coming to you with another video. And today I have something special for you. So I saw this uh, vintage watercolor palette on eBay for around 10 pounds, which is, I don't know, $12. And I just had to have it. Um, yeah. Problematic. Let's talk about the palette itself. So it's obviously um, children's watercolor tin and um, I saw it and I, I felt I had to have it. There's an, a different kind um, uh, that, um, that you can find on Google Images if you Google L, uh, I believe it's LL product um, watercolor set. Um, and a different one pops up, which is also a vintage set. And if anyone has it, I would love to have it. So now I would like to show you some of the examples of the paintings I do in watercolor. Um, so like this pagan girl. Um, and uh, this staked vampire. And then we have witch. Witch burning. Okay, I had to zoom out uh, a little bit uh, to fit in the paper and the palette just so you can see what I'm swatching. But if you want to have a closer look, the palette itself has the names of the watercolors uh, on it, which I find is both good and bad because, um, let me... So you can tell uh, what colors are uh, in the pans. The pans themselves, you can see here, are thin as hell. And they're also hard as rocks. So what I'm gonna do, because I've already um, played a little with the palette and I've done a little A6 painting of uh, this cute little vampire uh, on TikTok. If you follow me, uh, you might have seen it or you will see it. Um, yeah, I found it very fun, um, but I want to swatch, do bigger swatches uh, on a bigger piece of paper to see um, basically the colors that I like. I already know that the Scarlet Lake is uh, still quite pigmented, but the purples and the reds are doing great. They're still as pigmented as probably like new. Maybe not, but we'll see. So I've got my favorite um, brush and that is Renaissance Quirrell. I believe the... Um, the writing has faded completely, but let me see. I've got a bigger one. So it's a pro art Renaissance squirrel, England. And yes, I know this um, this brush look looks awful. It's it's all um, cracking and stuff. Uh, that's because I've left it a couple of times in water. Um, overnight and that's just what happens but i've had it for almost two years i want to say and it's it's still fine the bristles are still quite good um and this is my favorite size which was uh, it's hard to say but i believe it's like um Zero point zero dash two or zero dash three, one of those. Um, I'll have to find out for you. But this is my favorite size to work in, just because you can have quite a thick 
um, wash with them, but also once it's wet, you can do like the tiniest details. It's pretty good for that. So I really recommend. It's quite expensive. Um, I'll find it. I'll find a link for you for Jackson's or um, equivalent. Uh, just so you know the price as well. But this this brush is great because I don't like the thick brushes. I've I've tried. Um, I've bought. What's this one? This one's um, Windsor Newton Galleria round. Um, I don't even know if it's a watercolor brush, but it's too thick. It's too bouncy. Uh, this one's like very flowy and you can do some really nice loose um, effects with it. But let's get to it. So before I start, I'm gonna spray the watercolors and give it, give them a minute, uh, just so they soak up the water. And I'm gonna drown them, basically. Yeah, that should be good. Enough. I'll try to get the uh, tell you the names of the colors as well if I can read them, uh, because just because as I've said, it's a vintage palette from uh, '70s, so um, some of the names are faded, um, but I'll just wet the brush just a little. You can see the fine point that you can get with it. It's amazing, honestly. It's my favorite brush. Okay, so first one, um, what I can read is Cerise. Yes, yeah, Cerise is a color. Okay, let's get to it. That should be all right. I'll give a couple swivels just so Let me see, nine across. Yeah. It's not bad for a vintage watercolor. I thought they would be absolute garbage. Uh, but if you layer this, it looks fine. It looks fine. It's. Most of them are translucent, so don't be surprised. Um, I mean, if you find any of these palettes, um, I don't know if it's worth getting them for their pigmentation. For me, it's only like um, collectible value. And because I really liked um, I love vintage illustrations, and I do love the little um, kids playing in the sand. So this color is yellow. Next one is Ultramarine. I believe this one was one of the harder ones to... Yeah. Some of these are just... Um, basically evaporated. I could really like work my brush and try to get some of the pigment, but it comes out um, kind of like rust, not rusty, but um, it has some yellowish tones and I don't know where, where that's coming from. Maybe it's the binding, maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's the pigment, but basically as you can see, ultramarine, it's a bold color and what comes out is very pale. It's, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you up close uh, once I complete one of the lines, but basically it is what it is. Next color is vermilion. Uh, now, I can't remember if this one's quite pigmented or not. Uh, the reds were doing quite well. Yeah, vermilion is 
you can kind of see it's kind of orangey. Um, it's not quite. It's not quite red anymore. Unless it's vermilion orange. Am I mixing the colors up? Is vermilion more orange or more red? Let me that. Let me know in the comments. Next, we've got white, um, and this one actually surprised me because you can kind of get uh, some white out of this. It is slightly tinted. It's not quite titanium white, um, but for what it is, um, props to you, palette. Next one is cobalt blue, and blue one blue paints do not come through. My brush is working overtime here. I'm swiveling, I'm swiveling. Um, and it had the water in it, so you can barely make out something here. Um, it's not great. Next one is sepia, which actually came through, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, I was using it uh, for the inside of the eyes. I did not use any black, uh, but I did the the irises and the shading. So the darkest brown is sepia. And it looks like this. Kind of um, umber, umber brown, uh, If you layer it, it can get quite dark. So this one's still quite usable. I'm gonna leave a gap so I can write the names down, just because there's nine in a row here, but I've only fit seven here because I wanted bigger swatches. So let me just show you real quick. Um, Cerise, we've got yellow. Ultramarine, Vermilion, White, Cobalt Blue, and Sepia. It's not bad, huh? I mean, straight off the bat, these two, very usable. Vermilion, I could use that. Sepia, also a staple. Okay. Let's get to other colors. Next one is Crimson Lake. Okay. Let's see. Beautiful. Yeah, the red pigments um, stayed quite pigmented, which is fabulous. I'd say overall, this palette was a great investment. Um, Next color is gray. Let's see. It does have some red undertones. I don't know if it's because I've dipped into crimson light just before that. Let's, let's try another one. Yeah, that's more like it. Very pale. Uh, this one, I'd say, is not that great. I don't know, maybe like a pale shadow, for a pale shadow or something, but... Okay, so we've got Sap Green next. Okay. Very pigmented, but it doesn't look that organic. Um, I like more organic looking greens. This looks like um, almost viridian 
not quite, but it looks very thick green. Next color is Payne's Gray, and if I believe, if I remember correctly, yeah, it's it's not it's not the bluish Payne's Gray that you are used to if you use something like Daniel Smith or Schmincke. Yeah, it just looks gray, so I could I could use Payne's Gray instead of gray if I wanted to. Next color we've got burnt sienna. And I think that one stayed quite pigmented. Um, again, I'm comparing these to um, student grade uh, watercolors. So I'm, I'm not having some out of the world expectations for them. Next color is Pink Matter, which is a nice peachy, not quite peachy, more like pink blush. Um, could be a nice skin tone. Okay, let me just show you from a little closer. So the colors we've got, we've got Crimson Lake, which is this color here. And then we've got, ignore that one because that one was contaminated. We've got a uh, gray, sap green, Payne's gray, burnt sienna, and pink madder, which is pretty good. Let's continue. So we've got violet. Yeah, I can already tell it's gonna be quite pigmented. Yeah, this one's as good as uh, Carbazole Violet from Daniel Smith. Fantastic. At the moment, I'm very into my um, deep yellows and uh, light greens. Uh, I love that nice middle of between yellow and green. That's my favorite colors at the moment. Uh, let me just have a spritz. As they dry out. Okay, next color we've got is a burnt umber. And this one I think changed color or I don't know what happened, but to me this looks like um, uh, raw sienna. Is it raw sienna? Next is Indian Yellow. And this I adore. It looks like Turner's Yellow. No, it's actually like Raw Sienna Light from Daniel Smith. Still very pigmented, love it. So creamy as well. Next color is indigo, and that one was a struggle. That one was a struggle bus. Oh, it wasn't. Interesting. But it's completely black. I don't know, could they have been mixed? This looks black to me. It doesn't look like there's any indigo in there. But do we have any black? We have a black here. We'll have to see if this one's an indigo then. Uh, 
Next color is orange. I can't tell you the pigment names because there weren't any. Still quite pigmented, um, nice creamy, almost pastel um, kind of orange. Okay, next color is primrose yellow. This one's a bit struggling to pick up any pigment. Oh, but it's quite nice. It's it's. It reminds me of um, lemon yellow a bit, but like not quite in your face, but still. Next color is Rose Doray, and it's spelled with two E's at the end. Maybe because they didn't have apostrophes then? Or maybe it's how it's supposed to be spelled. Who knows? It's still quite, um, quite pinky, nice. Okay, let's have a look. I've, I've had a contamination here, but you can still see um, how vibrant these are. Let's get to it. Okay, so we've done up until Rose Doray. Next color is Purple Lake. Super pigmented again. The purples have survived. Maybe it's the red pigment in them. Who knows? Next color is black. Let's see if it's black or if it's... Oh, it is black. But this one's a bit more transparent, I'd say, from Indigo. Okay, next color is light red. This to me likes, looks like, um, like terracotta, terracotta, burnt sienna kind of color. Very vibrant. Next color is leaf green. I believe I really enjoyed that one last time. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? This kind of pale green. I will do in, in my next video, I don't know if if in the next or in the one after, I would like to do um, a, a painting with you using this palette. Next color is Venetian Red. And this one, I believe, is a flop. And this is very transparent. It's that, but super watered down. And my my brush is really digging into it. So I can kind of dab some more pigment, but it is what it is. Next color is mauve. And yeah, gorgeous purples. Uh, I'm telling you, the purples and the reds are doing fine. Those are more purple purples. This one's a bit more red and a bit more translucent. I mean, transparent, by the way. I sometimes say translucent, and God knows why. Next color is Silk Green, and I believe this was another one of my favorites. I'm telling you, green is my favorite color in the world. This is very minty green, like, like um, pastel minty green. Okay, 
Okay, let's have a closer look. We've had Purple Lake, we've had Black, we've had Light Red, Leaf Green, Venetian Red, Mauve, and we've had Silk Green. Okie doke. Next one is Olive Green. Also, a usable green, I'd say. It looks like, I believe this one, once it dries, it has um, some color separation with yellow, and it's quite visible. Next is Oriental Blue. Some of these names are really nice. Uh, I like when the names are quite original. Nothing, barely anything, and some, just some yellow and some, it looks like a dusty white color. You know, if you don't, if you don't, if you use muddy water to get some white, that's what it looks like. Next is Scarlet Lake. This one was one of my favorites to dip into last time when I painted that little vampire. Looks almost um, pyrrole red, but very transparent. Next is yellow ochre. Yep, very, very much ochre-y. Next is Prussian Blue. This one's a struggle bus. Barely any blue pigment there. Now, I don't know, in a case of vintage palettes, does the blue pigment um, kind of turn to stone and kind of hard to pick up? Or what happens to the blue pigment? I'm, I'm not quite getting. You see, if you kind of like push it in, you can get some pigmentation there. Next color is Van Dyke Brown. And it's one of my favorite browns on in Daniel Smith range. Yeah, this one's quite pigmented. I believe I used this. Um, where have I used this? I believe I used this in, somewhat in the hair and in the eyes as well. Very pigmented. Next is Antwerp Blue. Trying to get some pigment out of it. Now, this one's not bad. This one's probably the best blue in the palette. Well, well, well. I also like how they've put these primaries here. Uh, Rose Matter, Lemon Yellow, and Antwerp Blue. To me, they look like so. Another thing I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do soon is to do three random color paintings. This color, by the way, is lemon yellow. Somewhat pigmented. But not the best. Still usable, though. Next color is Rose Matter. Very pale, very translucent. But I guess, I guess if you layer it, maybe it's not the worst. 
Next is Gamboge. And is also one of my favorite yellows uh, in Daniel Smith range. People have been talking about the controversy of uh, misleading pigments or um, not putting down what's what's in the in the tube, and I don't really care as long as the color works. I'm still gonna f buy it. That color was sea green, and this is Roman ochre. It almost looks like there's like a piece of something in there. Pale brown. Okay, next one is called Just Buff. I assume it's Buff Titanium. I can tell the, the rest of the colors have dried out already. I'll need to spritz them again. And I'll need another piece of paper to finish off these swatches. Okay, let's give it a spritz. is Indian Red. Let's give that one a swivel. That's nice. That's nice. That reminds me of um, Matter Brown. I use it as a red for dried blood and such. But let me just give you a closer look. Quite nice, huh? I'll put this aside and we're gonna get another piece of paper. How many we've got left? We've got four left. Perfect. Okay. Just uh, finished setting up. I only have four colors left, so I chose this um, smaller piece of paper to finish the swatches. Let's just get to it because this video is getting to be super long. Now, this one's called Neutral Tint, and to me, that's either Payne's Gray or it's Indigo. I believe they might have been mixed up. Suspicious. But it's quite pigmented. It, 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 to me, that's paints gray. Next one is emerald green. Very pigmented. Reminds me of spring green in Daniel Smith range. Next one is brown pink. I don't know how what brown pink is. Like a potter's pink maybe. But to me it looks very ochre. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite ochre. And the last one is sky blue. That one's not too bad. That one's usable. So I know now that the Antwerp Blue and Sky Blue uh, were the best blues in the palette. Thank God I've got any usable blues in there. This is how these last four look.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you've made some art alongside um, while watching this video. I hope it inspired you to paint or try out watercolor. Please leave a like, uh, please leave a comment uh, and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. It makes my day when I see um, new subscribers or people commenting on my videos and uh, asking anything. Um, basically, if I'll know the answer, I'll let you know. Let me know, guys, if you loved any of the colors from this vintage palette. Unfortunately, I cannot give you um, a place where you can buy something like this. Um, I would suggest eBay. If you're lucky, I might have a surprise uh, video for you um, sometime soonish. Uh, I may or may not have purchased another vintage palette, which was quite bigger. Um, but you never know what quality paints you're gonna get, so. Just let me know if you've enjoyed uh, this video. Um, let me know which color was your favorite. If you if you saw any any colors that you've liked, and if you would like to see me paint, try and paint with one of these palettes. Thank you so much for watching, and have a lovely day. Bye.